Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to be here and nice to get to talk about stuff that I'm building on. So, as you can see here, I'm Petar Vojovic. I'm a software engineer at Near Horizon. And let's see what we're talking about. So, today I'm going to introduce myself a bit. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the boss after me. You're going to hear about the boss uh, a lot in a lot more detail. So Ilya is going to give a presentation about the boss. Uh, I'm then going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's more about like experiences coming from Web 2 and now like what's better building on Web 3 and what made it easier. I'm going to mention uh, what I'm building, which is Horizon, and give a bit of an intro about it. And if we have some time for it, I'll have a Q&A session with you. And I'll probably thank you at, at the end for listening to me. Uh, so who am I? I am a nerd, because I'm building in Web3. But I'm also sporty. Uh, I might not look uh, like it, but I do build web. So I build Horizon. I build Nearcon, which is uh, or I, I actually built a website for Nearcon, which is a whole conference that we're running. And it's going to be in November this year in Lisbon. So make sure you attend that. Horizon is a great product for projects for founders starting right now. So go check that out. The QR code is just to lead you to my website and connect with me. Maybe you want to uh, see what, what else I'm doing. I also like basketball a lot. And I like dogs. I have a Rottweiler. She's a, she's a bit of a handful, but you know all dogs are. So who's the boss? Well, is it Marik? Uh, depends on who you ask. Is it Ilya? Also depends on who you ask. Is it Nier? That's for sure. Like Nier is the boss. We are the blockchain operating system. So that's a very uh, complicated thing that we're doing it, in order to enable users and projects and, and companies to onboard people to Web3 a lot more easily and to build faster, you can, again, scan the QR code or visit near.org to see more and experience the boss for yourself. Uh, again, Ilya is going to talk a lot more in detail about this. So may not take all that I, everything I say for like with a grain of salt, because he's going to be explaining it better. So. Let's start off with the good from Web2. So what's good? Ah, uh, this is not animated. Just imagine me running super fast, or in this case, Quicksilver, because building in Web2 is pretty, pretty fast. Like You have optimizations, whether it is like loading on the client side, the server side rendering. But what I'm talking about here mostly is just like the speed of building. So you want to build fast. You want to iterate fast, because you want to respond to what your customers need. You want to establish product market fit. So that's why you need speed. This is uh, what I'm talking about. This is composition. Like We know about composition. We usually make components uh, for the th things that we're building. We're just not like building everything into one huge HTML file. We usually uh, put it in different places, but we also use community packages. So we like npm install, cargo ads, uh, pip install, whatever else we're doing. We're also using community-based packages. And the thing about that is, in Web2, we usually use a whole package. So it's somewhat granular, but not fully. And again, like I said, we need to run npm install. We need to install the things. We need to run additional commands. We need to run additional infrastructure just to tell our Webpack, our Snowpack, our TurboPack what we're trying to build. Here, as you can see, all that I need to actually build something, to actually include someone else's code, is use a widget in a source tag. And the source tag tells me, like in the first case, mob.near, that's a near account, a near address. And I want a widget from their account that's called time ago. I pass in props, and voila, I get something rendered. Same goes for the second example. We have a widget from the near top level account. We have account profile inline. That's a widget that someone built. That's something we're using. And we don't have to build it ourselves. So we have composable UI. We can do the same for our own components. As you can see here, 
I'm passing in, again, a widget with a source. I'm using a template string literal, uh, something very common in JavaScript, with an owner ID account variable, because I'm uh, I've declared it somewhere else in the code, so I just want to pass it. I don't want to hard code it everywhere I use it. And I just use a widget that I've built that it's, that's not in the same file, and I just import it. It'll get rendered. I don't have to do any dependency checking. I don't have to uh, declare anything in a package.json. Everything's automatic. Now, let's go to the bad. Again. This is supposed to be animated, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I just want some sort of responsibility when I'm building for customers. And what I'm talking about here is ownership. So right now in Web2, people don't have ownership of their own data. Like If I log in with Google, if I log in with Twitter, GitHub, Facebook, whatever, that's not my data. Even if it is data that I produced, it's not the data that I control. Like someone else controls that data, and they sell it for advertisement money, and they use it in other apps, other, uh, other websites that want to utilize that data. They need me to log in with that account. They, need, they don't ask me for permission. They essentially ask Google for permission to give them the data, and they, again, do whatever they want. Uh, maybe it is sometimes better for the customer in terms of experience, but it's not better for the customer in terms of the value that they're getting. They are definitely not extracting their value from their own data. How we solve that on the boss, we essentially have a wallet provider or a wallet selector. So you own your data. You, you log in with your wallet, and you just use it seamlessly on any app that's on the boss. So how, how does that work? Well, the boss is near.org, like I showed you earlier. You just log in once, and all of the apps that are available on Boss, you just use them. You don't have to log into them again. You're already logged in. When you want to commit data, when that app wants to use uh, the date or edit data on your behalf, it asks you specifically because you need to sign a transaction. You, you just can't like, add stuff or write stuff to the chain without uh, signing it. So that's where this comes in. You can always remove your data. That's you're in control. The customer's in control. They know what their data is. They can query it at any time. They can give it to anyone else at any point in time. It's on chain. It's theirs. They control it. Let's go to the other one. So what's the ugly part? So this part is not bad. I just don't like it that much. And that is, again, not animated. It's setup. Who here has set up a Web2 project once in their lifetime, like a front end? Anyone in the crowd? How many config files have you had to deal with? Probably a lot, I'm guessing. Like more, more than five, I would say. Like there's your prettier, there's your uh, post CSS, your package JSON, Tailwind, TS config, uh, Slint. There's your Prisma, your public folder. A lot of stuff that you have to deal with. Well, when you're building on Boss, it's a lot easier to do this. Like, there's still some config, but this is all optional. Like, prettier, I just want my code to be prettier, but I don't need any builder config. I don't need any bundler, anything. Everything is already on chain. Everything is already in, in the Boss. I just utilize it. I just write the code. I deploy it. You don't even have to use a Git repo. You don't even have to build uh, from your local machine. There's an uh, online editor that's like a VS Code editor. You just use whatever you want. You just import the widgets. You get live reload, live preview right next to your editor in the browser. And it's free. You just go to near.org uh, and use it there. This is just because I'm a Vim head, so I like my NeoVim setup, and I like uh, working locally. And now, let me tell you what all of this enabled me to do. So what's Horizon? Well, technically, if you Google what's Horizon, it's the definition that you have right there. But that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. Horizon is actually a tool that we've built on the boss. And this is an actual screenshot. This is live right now. And you can, you can go and 
check it out on near.org. Uh, there's like the solutions tab, or you can just search Horizon. You'll you'll find this. And what we are, we are a tool that helps uh, helps communities or helps uh, founders build communities, find other founders, find service providers that we've uh, kind of pre-selected for them. So we've helped them uh, get providers that they should be using because a lot of these early stage startups, they don't know who to go to. They don't know what they need. We're here to help you. So we're trying to help you build your community. We're, we're trying to help you uh, get product market fit or at least validate your idea. And we're here to help you find the people who can help you build further and, and grow. Here's a QR code and or near.org slash horizon if you want to go check that out in more detail. So these are the people that we're looking for. We're looking for founders, we're looking for contributors, and we're looking for backers. So those are all of the people that we've we're trying to work together with and try to help our founders grow more and just grow their business, help them navigate this Web3 uh, ecosystem, help them build within the boss, and uh, help them build on near. If you have any questions, I'm free to answer them, or I'll, at least I'll try. So is there, are there any questions from the crowd? All right, I'll ask some questions to myself. So first, how to get in touch with Horizon. This is if you want uh, direct support from our team, you can just scan this QR code and you can get in touch with us so you don't even need to go to Boss directly, although I would highly encourage that. But this is if you just want to reach out to us and you're having trouble with something, just feel free to scan this and, and we'll try to help you out. Next question, what's our stack? So there's a lot of components here that we're using. Uh, OK, now I'm back. So BOSS components are essentially like JSX. We have additional context and props that are available to you within the environment. But if you've done uh, React or SolidJS, you know JSX, it's going to be pretty easy for you to onboard. So there's lots of examples out there. Uh, if you've looked at my, if you scanned my uh, QR code earlier, you'll have a link to the GitHub repo to all of this as well. So you'll, you'll be able to look into it. Uh, then we have a smart contract. The smart contract is, again, on near. It's written in Rust. Uh, all of it is open source. If you want to go check it out, uh, feel free to do so. What we're also utilizing is an indexer and an API to enable faster search for people. So when people want to search uh, other founders, they want to search uh, maybe some contributors or uh, backers, we're using an indexer to pick up on all of the data and an API to serve it at blazingly fast speeds using Rust. We also are helping our customers. We're trying to work with them as much as we can. So that's why we have a CRM. And we do some sync and aggregation between people who sign up on the platform and people who uh, we want to help out. So we just use uh, Airtable as a CRM, and we use Rust for some of the syncing. It's just because I, like, I like Rust. So how much does it cost to onboard a new user? We don't pay for any onboarding, so it's free. Like the, They're onboarded onto Boss, and they can use FastAuth to essentially have free accounts where they can seamlessly and easily uh, develop or use any of the apps that are available. So they just go on there, explore, and they can use Horizon. Of course, we do pay for the storage on our own smart contract, but the users don't have to pay for that, and that's a very small amount. So that's pretty cheap. And yes, I can dunk. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening to me. Mm -hmm.